O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Beneath the shadow of your throne, your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting you are God, to endless years the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here today on this Wednesday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. As we rejoice today that God is our help, just as he was in ages past, and for so many more years to come. Let us know that God is in our presence today and that he loves us. He's in your heart today. He's with you, encouraging you, giving you strength, giving you hope. As we gather today in the presence of God, let us ask our Lord to forgive our many sins. Let us ask him to give us new life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Paul, an ambassador of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy ones and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank, we always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for the holy ones because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. Of this you have already heard through the tr word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, so also among you. For the day you heard it and came to know the grace of God in truth, as you learned it from Ephorus, our beloved fellow slave, who is a trustworthy minister of Christ on your behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I, like a green olive tree in the house of the Lord, trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I will thank you always for what you have done and proclaim the goodness of your name before your faithful ones. I trust in the mercy of God forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered, entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out from 
from many shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We see today the compassion that Jesus has. As he goes about, he's curing people. He's curing Simon's mother-in-law, who has a severe fever. You know, back then they didn't have the medications that we have. And normally if someone had a high fever, they probably were not going to make it. And so Jesus cured her. He went about touching people, curing them, laying his hands upon them. They acknowledged who he was. You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them because he did not want to be known as this miracle worker. He wanted to be known for his love, for his mercy, his forgiveness, for the way he taught about God. <coughs> they wanted him to stay. They wanted him to stay because he brought them all of this healing. But you know, Jesus had a purpose. He had to go and preach the gospel to other places. For that's why he was sent, to tell people of God's love. That's why you and I have been baptized, because we too are being sent. We too are called to be Jesus' witnesses in this world, to continue that mission that he has. Now, we don't have to go from town to town. We can do it right in our own homes. There are so many people in our own families, we all know some of them, who just don't seem to believe or just don't understand or just seemingly don't care about God. But don't give up on them. Because God loves them. And God will give them that opportunity to come back. You might be that opportunity. I'm not saying to nag them, to bombard them, but instead pray for them. Gently whisper in God's ear. And then, most importantly, bear witness. Live your life. You know, if you go to your child's house, well, probably, let's say you're, and they are adults, and it's Sunday morning, and you're visiting, you know, go to Mass. You don't have to drag them with you. Go to Mass. And said, I will see you afterwards. Don't be ashamed of your faith. But what you do without making a big deal about it, without trying to drag them and force them to go, you bear witness to them. And one day, they'll remember that. That they need God. Just like we need God. We have found the treasure. We must help others seek that treasure. And don't worry, God's looking for them. Jesus will go out and find them. But sometimes you and I are called to bear witness and to continue Jesus' ministry. He never nagged anyone to be one of his disciples. He invited he challenged. He left that up to them. He does the same for us. He invites us. He challenges us. We have to make our own decisions. But as always, some decisions have eternal consequences. God our Father knows our needs and is always ready to respond with confidence in God's love. We approach him with the needs of the world.
for Pope Francis and all the leaders of the church. May the light of Christ continue to illuminate their every step. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who make decisions that affect the lives of others, may they be guided by compassion and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for all human life, from the moment of conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in poverty, may God in his mercy provide for their needs and grant them relief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who offer their gift of time to our faith community, may God bless their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, for their healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, may they be warmly welcomed by the angels and saints into God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now unite our prayers into one. Let us lift them up to our Heavenly Father as we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of compassion, hear the prayers we present to you and answer them in accordance to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A thousand ages in your sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever-flowing stream bears all our lives away. They fly forgotten as a dice at the opening day. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be our guide while life shall last and our eternal home.